All right, so here we have a position time graph. And you can see that this is a curve, so this is a not constant change in position. So what that means is over equal time periods, if we go from here to here, we have a certain change in position. From here to here, that change in position is more than it was over here. From here to here, that change in position is more. Change in position is more. So as we go along in equal time periods, our change in position increases. If that's true, then that must mean that our velocity increases as well. Now in our constant velocity graph, we could pick any two points on the line, and the slope of that line told us the average velocity. The thing is though, the average velocity line overlapped the original curve on that graph. That meant that any point along the average velocity line also represented the instantaneous velocity at that point. On this graph, we can do the same thing. If we take these two points and draw a line, where's my point? If we take this and we draw a line through those two points, that line is going to represent the average velocity between those two points. Okay? Now this line is what we call a secant line, right? This is a curve. And when we draw a line that connects two points on a curve, we call this a secant line. So if we draw a secant line on a not constant position time graph, the line connecting those two points, the slope of that line, will represent the average velocity in between those two points. Now you can probably just look at this and see that the difference is the instantaneous velocity at any point along this curve. So the instantaneous velocity here isn't really represented by the average velocity. Okay, so it's not even necessarily close to the average velocity. So the difference is that the instantaneous velocity at any point, so this is our data curve, so the instantaneous velocity at this point isn't very well represented by the average velocity. The instantaneous velocity at this point is not very well represented by the average velocity. So this average velocity line just doesn't give us a very good picture of the instantaneous velocity at any given point. But what if we come along and we shrink this time interval? What if we pick these two points along our line? What if we pick these two here and draw a line there? So here we have a secant line. And these two points here, we can see the secant line between these two points does a little bit better job in resembling the curve of our data, right? So there's not near as much difference between our actual data points and the line that we drew as our average. What if we shorten it again? Okay, if we take this, what if we make these two points our lines and draw those there? Okay, even more so, as we shorten that time interval, the smaller and smaller we make our time interval, the more the slope of that secant line more closely resembles our data points. So as the time interval gets shorter, the secant more closely resembles the curve, and therefore the average velocity is a more reasonable estimate of the instantaneous velocity. Now what if we shrink that time interval down to zero? What do we have then? If we have a zero change in time, we aren't really connecting two points on our curve anymore, what do we have? We don't have a secant, we have a tangent. So if we draw a line tangent to the curve at some point, let's just say this is our tangent. This is kind of tricky. Okay. So if we draw a line tangent to our curve, what we have done is we have shrunk our time interval down to zero. So if we find the slope of this tangent line, what that's going to tell us is the average velocity at this instant, or the instantaneous velocity. So instead of drawing secant lines on our curve, if we draw a tangent to any given point on a curve, the slope of that tangent line will tell us the instantaneous velocity at that point. So let's do that. If we find the slope of this particular line, to find that we just pick two points. Okay, it's, it's nice sometimes to just pick the two points that might have nice time intervals. I didn't go very far on that. Let's just pick this one here. So here's our two points on our tangent line. To find the slope of this line, you just do the rise over run. So our y point is right on the 50 centimeter. 
So remember rise over run. Okay, so rise in this case is our change in position. Okay, run in this case is our change in time. So what we're looking for is our final position minus our initial position over our final time minus our initial time. Okay, so over here we have our final position is 50 centimeters. Our initial position is maybe, oh, I don't know, 19, 18 or 19? So 19 centimeters. We're estimating here on our graph. Our final time, if we read our graph down, oh, about 7 point, or 0.79 seconds. And our initial time is 0 0.5 seconds. So if we get our calculator out, uh, 50, 50 minus 19 divided by 0.79 minus 0.5. And we have a velocity of 107 centimeters per second. So what that means, this is our instantaneous velocity at this point right here. So the line tangent that we drove that we drove that we drew to this curve, that point touching the tangent is 107 centimeters per second. Now let's do another one. So if we do the tangent here, if I can hold things still, it'd be better. All right, so there is another tangent line. So that tangent line is going to be right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the slope of this pink line now. And if we can pick two points there. So our rise here, let's see, we, oh, maybe 35 centimeters minus, say, 13 centimeters. The time is 0 0.7 seconds, and our initial time was 0 0.3 seconds. So to find the slope of that line, we're going to take 35 minus 13 divided by 0 0.7 minus 0.3. And what we get here, that seems low, is 2.5 centimeters per second. No, we don't. That can't be right. Um, let's do that math again. 35 minus 13. And we're going to divide by 0.4. <laughs> okay, that did not look right at all. So instead of 25, we have 55 centimeters per second. Okay, so the slope of that line is 55 centimeters per second. That looks a little bit better. All right, now we're going to do one more. Let's pick one up here. draw these lines however long you want. I like to go through a point somewhere so we can have a nice round number. We don't have to do a lot of estimating if we do that. All right, so this point right here at 0.9 seconds, let's pick this point. I'm not sure what this time is. Sometimes Logger Pro, this isn't necessarily the same time interval as this. Kind of looks like it might be, but let's draw this. Let's just pick you know what, let's do this. Let's just pick this point here and this point here. Okay, so for our blue line, we have, oh, maybe 86. Let's go 86 centimeters. And for our blue line, we have 34 as our initial position. Our initial time Let's actually measure that, shall we, and see if that's the same distance. Picked a really bad number to there. So that's right at three centimeters. Okay, so this is the right time interval. So this would be 1.0. So our time period then is, say, 0 0.99 seconds. Not quite one second. 
and then our initial time would be 0 0.7 seconds. So if we do this math, we have 86 minus 34, 0.99 minus 0.7, so 179 centimeters per second. So at this point in time, so this is the velocity at 0.9 seconds. Okay, that's the instantaneous velocity at 0.9 seconds. This is the instantaneous velocity. This was our tangent point. So this is the instantaneous velocity at 0.7 seconds. This is the instantaneous velocity at 0.5 seconds. So wherever your tangent was, at that point in time, this is your velocity. And that makes sense. We have defined this. We've seen that this is increasing in our velocity. And so if we are moving at 55 centimeters per second here, that's an increase if we go to 107, and then it's an increase if we go from to 179. Okay. <clears throat> so what we want to do with this now is to plot this onto a velocity time graph. So what we have is we have some data that we want to put into a new graph. So our data, we have our instantaneous velocity is 107 centimeters per second, and our time is 0 0.7 seconds. At 0 0.5 seconds, our velocity was 55 centimeters per second. At 0 0.9 seconds, our velocity is 179 centimeters per second. Okay, So what we want to do with our data now is put this into a velocity time graph. Probably three points will be enough. Four might be better, uh, but you should get a pretty good relationship with just those three points. So however many tangent lines beyond three that you want to draw will give you a little bit better data. But this is what you're going to do with this information. You're going to take this data and put it into a velocity time graph and see what you get.